We now invite Gordon to come and give us his address before he gives out the award. Thank you very much. Good evening. First of all, can I just thank you for the invite? And it's always a pleasure to be asked to, do, or to perform such a delightful task. Unfortunately, it won't be as funny compared to last year, but Ken Dodd's the genius and the national treasure. You must have some great fun last year. Right. I told the PAGB that as my couple of years as president, I would like to be I like it to be known as the years of the print. So it's great that I'm talking to you amidst such a wonderful exhibition, and it's a good to see that the printed image is alive and kicking, especially in South Liverpool Photographic Society. The MNCPU this year had a good print entry, and so did a couple of other federations, the Midland and the Scottish Federation. But alas, the other federation, and there's another 13, struggle with prints and they tell me it was the jack it was due to the lack of exhibition space. And I tell you South Liverpool, this is a wonderful exhibition space. I really hope that you get lots of people through it. It must be the best exhibition space in the country. So well done you and well done to all your sponsors. Now several of you enter the BPE, the British Photographic Exhibition, yes. Um, it's sad to think that of the 18 exhibitions, only four were known except prints. Isn't that sad? Uh, and I'll tell you who they are, because you've got two in your area. You've got Southport and SRGB. The other two are Solly Hull and Cotswold Monocrome. Cotswold Monocrome. <laughs> this year, and I'm just going to give it the plug, SRGB bucked the trend. We've recently had our exhibition and we had over 1,500 prints, which is quite quite something. It was put to me the other day, and, uh, I get around the country a bit, it's the, print, it's the print that is the glue that holds the camera clubs together. If you think about it, if we all went down the digital route and we didn't do prints, we could all sit at home, couldn't we? We could get a judge and we could have a webinar and we could all sit at home and we could see what the judge says. But it's the print, it's, it really is the print that you hold it in your hand and it's something magical about it. They haven't got to be big prints, I mean to say, you've got master book prints here, I'm going to say they are absolutely wonderful. And there's nothing better than picking up a print. I've actually seen judges pick up a print and actually smell them, you know, sort of, oh, sort of remember the dark room days, all the fix and all the rest of it. But the most worrying thing is that the public have taken hundreds of thousands of images, aren't they, through their iPhones, their compacts, uh, their tablets, they show their friends on Instagram or Facebook. Do we see any prints? Where are the prints? You know, they're on the phone. And I remember, I'm sure several of you do, when we were younger, going around to our grandparents, with our mum and dad, and they would get out the family album. You know, get out the family album, and they'd get the prints out. And mum and some would fall on the floor, and mum would pick them up, and uh, you look at it, and uh, and your grandma would say, that's, that's our board. And you look at it, and, say, mm. and, then, and then it would turn the print out and say, yes, it's board, it was taken in New Brighton, 1947, and you would be amazed at the, at the dresses they wore. We are going to be a missing generation, you know, because all these prints and images that people take are going to be in the cloud somewhere, you know, up in there. It not only gave us an insight into fashion of yesteryear, but but the background, and if you looked at the background, there were buildings, probably not there, probably here, and you could place them, and it was a talking point. It was a family, it was a family thing that you did after dinner. A simple photograph not only gave pleasure to the family, but showed a sense of the sort of local history. Many of you, similar age than yourself, will remember those first holidays with our friends, when we took, when we took along that Kodak Brownie, Remember the Kodak 127 Brownie? Do you know it, it ceased production exactly 50 years ago, in 1967? And they made three versions. And the negative side, this is boring, isn't it? It was, it was one and five eight by two and a half. And we had those little things printed. We used to rush down the boots with the, with the film. And we 
used to get them in a packet. Do you remember? We'd get them in a packet and we'd brush out the shops and we'd go through. You better not show me mum that one. <laughs> <laughs> and you better not get them. And we had these things. Do you know what these are? These are compact cards, you know, there's only 36 in a reel here. There we are. Uh, where are they today? Uh, yeah. Oh, the, hol the holiday snacks. And we were hoping that they were all going to be masterpieces when we got made with a bright envelope. And then, and then you looked on the back and somebody wrote on there, sorry, the exposure is wrong. But we, but, but we all thought that when we took them, they were all going to be the wonderful masterpieces. After showing all our friends the prints, we would put them in the Huntley Palmer biscuit tin. And then, sooner or later, on a wet Sunday, that biscuit tin would come out and you would look through them and you'd go through again. It's a, it was a bit different because some people took slides and you knew you were in trouble when you went round their house for dinner. <laughs> and they drew the curtains, they got the slide projector out, Tell you what, you couldn't wait to leave, could you? <laughs> but I get worried that my children, and even to ourselves, uh, you know, we don't take enough of those ordinary photographs. We don't write on the back of them. So when when we sort of leave this mortal earth, um, and they're looking through our Huntley Park tin. They might find so many photographs as we did when our grandparents were alive. Um, but a friend of mine, when I mentioned this to them, they had a great idea that they would make a blurb book. There are other books that you can actually make. But I couldn't help thinking that even those photographs were limited to a small number in the book. And maybe they were slightly sterile. They weren't the moment. Because when you had that 127 or that other sort of 35, new 35 mil camera, you, you, you took images and they were at the moment. And they were all part of our social history. So what's the alternative today? Keep your images on an electronic device, which is a smartphone, and send it to the cloud. Keep them on the computer and so on. Then you sell your phone. Boom! You formatted it, you sold it. Guess what? All those lovely images, they were on it. Did you back it up? I was just going to back it up. We do that with our computers, don't we? It crashes, and you know, so within an hour, you, you would have been backing that up, would you? No, you wouldn't. But, um, so the hard drive goes down, and you lose the pictures. I haven't got to say that, I'm not saying that you've got to print every picture, but take some of the ordinary pictures along to your local store, whether it's a super, supermarket or whatever, and get a few printed right on the back of the keyboard. The one thing that people always mention when they have a tragedy, when, when, when they have a tragedy like, like a flood or the house catches fire, they're not worried about the tele, the washing machine. Guess what they're worried about? The photographs. Irreplaceable. But I fear in the future there won't be photographs that are irreplaceable because there won't be any. So I'm asking you, all of you, just talk to your friends. Tell them to take, tell them to take a print. It's all about the print. And digital media, well, I had a friend who had 30,000 images on his computer. He was mortified. He lost the lot. Lost the lot. And you've got thousands on your computer. I'm told by one of my techie friends that backing up is complete to you, at least back it up in three different places. You, of course you will back your images up, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you all do. Yeah. Rush home tonight, back them up. <laughs> so, my, so, ladies and gentlemen, my message to you, please print this snapshot. I'm not talking about the wonderful images you've just seen in the back of the hall tonight, just snapshot, and really encourage others to do the same. Otherwise, you're going to have a whole generation surrounded by images, but have a few personal records. That's the message, and I'm trying to put this message. Um, I don't work for Max Millman or Kodak, uh, and I don't mean sort of print these wonderful A3s. It's just the ordinary snapshot, part of ours. Uh, 
of, own, of our own social history. Right. However, it's not all doom and gloom because the PAGB are launching in a few weeks a new competition, prints only. With a winning print that have exhibited the gallery in London on the South Bank for two weeks. Uh, I take it you all buy e news, you all get e news loaded down, it's free. You know, it's, it's a good publication. PAGB e news, look it up on the internet. And all the information will be there, and I hope one of your club members will download it and take it to the club and put it on your notice board, uh, because there's going to be some wonderful prizes. We're only going to exhibit 50 images from 50 different photographers. It's an open competition. There is a slight charge. I wanted, and I, uh, the treasurer wouldn't agree with me, I want it to be a free entry, but uh, we're just charging a nominal fee of £10, and you can enter five prints. Uh, there's going to be three categories, it's going to be monochrome, open in nature, but only going to be print. Uh, the size will be uh, uh, in the e news, but I think it's going to be of a fairly square format. There's going to be some wonderful prizes such as printers, Epson and Canon are going to offer a printer. Uh, yes, Epson and Canon are going to offer a printer and Sony and camera. We did ask for the A9, but uh, <laughs> I think they said no. But nevertheless, that's a, they are offering a, a, a decent camera and we're hoping to get a prize for every print that's been exhibited. Uh, the idea was put forward to us by Hannah Muller. Uh, of course you know that um, the sponsor for the PAGB as, as well, well Hannah Muller, are coming on board. But Photospeed and Thermojet are also our sponsors of the name for Melbourne then. And we hope to get uh, uh, sponsors from uh, other parts of the photographic world. And it was Jane Lyons from the LCPU came up with the name of the competition. It's going to be called Masters of Print. <coughs> so I hope, really hope to see some work from the South Liverpool Photographic Society. It is open and what we're looking for is something different but a good quality print. There's only 50 going to be on the show and the gallery is only a few minutes walk from the Tate of London um, and I shall go along to the Tate of London get the, get the director of the Tate and I'm whisking him along and show him the exhibition with the hope that he might he might feel obliged that he could show it around the country and show it in the Tate in Liverpool. Well ladies and gentlemen, it now gives me very great to declare the South Liverpool Photograph Society's 2017 annual exhibition well and truly open. 